While every manufacturer is offering some type of ADOS system, the calibrations procedures are going to be different among all of these cars. Today we're going to show you how to adjust the Honda front radar. Just like a lot of manufacturers, Honda does offer a pre-collision or adaptive cruise control system utilizing a front radar. And as in the case of this vehicle here, it was involved in a major collision in the front end. Ultimately, we have to now go ahead and calibrate that front radar per Honda. Anytime it's removed, replaced, or damage was suspected to it, we have to go ahead and go through the calibrations. We're gonna go through that procedure on this one right now. You'll also see I don't have the DOS 3000 rack with me right now. I don't need that. This is a little bit of a unique procedure where we're gonna use our stand with our triangle set up there. We have our laser. We also have a 3.5 millimeter driver for adjusting the radar angle. We've got a distance meter and some other tools that we're going to use. First thing we want to do, as in the case of any vehicle, is getting the diagnostics. Remember, first thing you want to do with any ADOS calibration is to do a thorough pre-scan on your vehicle to make sure there's no DTCs related to the ADOS system of the vehicle that could affect the actual calibration. So you always want to read your DTCs first, start your pre-scan, and select all of the modules. Also, going to select pre-scan on my ADOS link so that I have a saved copy of that in my ADOS link. So that's going to go through and check all the modules right now. Specifically, the ones I'm really worried about are the ADOS modules and anything related to the front radar uh, and the collision that occurred. The scan is complete. You'll notice while this was finishing up, I did go ahead and install a battery maintainer on this vehicle. That's one thing I did fail to mention earlier on is that this is a hybrid and these batteries don't seem to last quite as long with the key on as a normal non-hybrid vehicle. So it's a good tip, go ahead and put a battery maintainer on there so you don't have any problems arise midway through your calibration and really screw things up. So I did go ahead and take a look and we have no DTCs and my pre-scan is saved to my ADOS link that I can provide to the customer once I'm all done with our calibration. So now I'm gonna go back and go ahead and get into ADOS calibration. And we have a couple choices here. We're gonna select radar. All right, we're in our front radar aiming. It's gonna tell us the tools that we need that we discussed a little bit earlier. Our stand with our triangle, a laser level, um, a reflector, and uh, our distance laser as well. So those are the things that you're gonna be using today. All right, so make sure that everything is vertically aligned when they replace this or reinstalled it. There's a procedure to make sure that it's level before you do your calibration. That has been checked and verified. And again, we're gonna perform the calibration when the sensor is reinstalled after removal. The sensor and nearby parts are impacted in a collision, or if you can't see the car in front of you, for any other reason. Again, here's all your required preconditions. We discuss these all the time. A lot of room, good lighting, level surface, no excessive weight in the vehicle. Make sure all your tires are set to the correct PSI. If there's also a front license plate bracket installed, go ahead and remove that. Honda does tell you to do that in the service manual. The procedure might not be marked here in the ADOS link, but it's a good idea to go ahead and do that as well. We are going to, of course, go through the guided tour summary on this so we can see what's done step by step. You'll see you're going to need a lot of space in front of your vehicle when you're doing this. Make sure there's nothing in the way, no metal objects nearby. That will really skew or cause the sensor to not be able to see the actual target when we get it set up. So make sure you have nothing around, everything's wide open on this one. All right, so front radar aiming. The first thing that we're going to do, if you didn't check for DTCs, is verify that this DTC is not present. We didn't have any DTCs in any of our modules, so we're gonna go ahead. Press the main switch 
for the adaptive cruise control that can be found on the steering wheel. What we're basically doing is making sure that there is nothing that the radar sees. If it sees something in the way, we're not going to be able to do this. So you need to make sure there's nothing in front of the car. We're gonna turn that on and then press the continue on the steering wheel controls and we'll look at the actual screen on the instrument cluster and it should say no target. If it has something displayed, that means there's something blocking it and we're gonna to have to remove that item or adjust where you're doing your calibration so there is no target seen by this radar. So I'm gonna check that real quick. I just verified there is no target seen, meaning the area that I have laid out in front of us has nothing that the radar is picking up. So we can press continue and move on to start setting up our distances. Now we can get into actually doing the actual calibration and the aiming of this radar. We're gonna start getting into marking our points. We're gonna do 4,000 millimeters on points A to B on both sides of the vehicle. And we'll go ahead and start doing that now. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and get my 4,000 millimeters. And I like to use the center line of the actual rim itself. That's why I've got my plumb bob in my hand. I'm gonna go ahead and get center line on both front wheels and then go out 4,000 millimeters and create two more points. So I've got both of my marks on the floor for 4,000 millimeters from our first points. Now it's asking us to put a string or a laser between the two points that we just created. I think it'd be a lot easier to see the string if I go ahead and tape that down so you can kind of see what they're asking for. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. We've got that step done. We're gonna go ahead and press continue. So the next step here, what we're gonna be doing is using our, our stand and our laser back to those points that we just created. And we're gonna use the laser to actually intersect the emblems of the vehicle. So we're gonna open up the trunk and get that lined up back right where we have that line set up to kind of try and center out our stand so I'm gonna move this on over there, open up the trunk, turn on our laser, and cut the actual emblems right in half. And you'll be able to see when I open up the trunk that it'll work that way. We're gonna obviously have to close the hood a little bit, that's okay too, uh, we'll do that. Um, but we'll go ahead and do that now. We have our stand on our line that we've created right here, 4,000 millimeters back from the front radar. Now we're gonna line up the stand using our laser and our emblems on our vehicle. We're gonna use the front emblem and the one on the trunk. You can see it back there. And I'm gonna intersect those to know that my radar stand is level with this vehicle, straight on. These are very important measurements here. So I'm dissecting both emblems right now. I can go ahead and turn off the beeping laser that would annoy a lot of people. So we're set up here now. Now I can go ahead and press continue and see our next steps on this radar aiming. Next thing it's asking us to do is go ahead and uh, level out our radar stand. We have a bubble level down there. We're gonna go ahead and adjust this to make sure that it is perfectly level as well.
So we've got our stand leveled out. Make sure the reflector is directly point towards the center of the radar sensor. And we're gonna go ahead and press continue. Now it's gonna ask us to use our distance laser with our black tray holder and point the laser and adjust the height of our stand to the lower edge of the radar unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that. Drop this. We're gonna lower this down and start getting that lined up with the lower level of the actual radar right there. You can see it showing up. And we want it on the lower portion of that radar. You'll notice my laser is not pointing directly in the center of the actual radar. That's okay because the tray holder is off a little bit. I'm just trying to get the lower level of that. My actual triangle area is still pointed on the center of this, of this radar. But you know your tray, it's just off a little bit. That's okay, you're still just gonna get that lower portion of the radar and we'll move on to the next step. Press continue. Now it's gonna ask us to put the, um, our distance laser in the vertical position in the tray holder. And then we're gonna go up 22 more millimeters um, from the lower edge of the radar and then lock it into place. Then we can go ahead and remove our laser um, and our measuring tray once that's all done. So we're gonna go ahead and, and switch that around and go up 22 more millimeters using our stand right there and our laser level. So we're gonna to need to go up 22 millimeters from the reading that I have right here. So I'm gonna take it up to 267, loosen up the knob on the back of our stand, go ahead and raise this up till we get to about 267 millimeters, lock it into place, and then I can go ahead and remove the tray right here. Okay, now we're gonna make sure that nobody enters the area. Do not turn off the scan tool or the ignition switch um, and close all of the doors. We're gonna go ahead and step away from the area right now before I press continue. We got a warning here letting us know that we are transmitting radio waves during the calibration. Um, ensure there's a distance of at least 20 centimeters between the radar and the body of any person. So we're far enough away, we can go ahead and press continue to begin our radar calibration. Our front radar aiming, we can see that the misalignment tolerance must be plus or negative 0.1 of a degree. Right now our vertical misalignment is 1.1 and our horizontal is negative 0.008. You'll also notice that the continue button is essentially grayed out. I am not allowed to press continue right now until I get these adjustments within the specified tolerances on this screen. And the really cool thing about Honda that's really neat is that you can see these actually change live when you adjust it. So I'm gonna head on over to the front of the radar, remove the cover, grab my 3.5 millimeter screwdriver, and we're going to go ahead and adjust these to get these into tolerances. And again, you'll be able to see these change. And once you're within specs, that continue button will essentially light back up, turn blue and say, you're good to go. So I'm gonna head on over there now. So you have two adjustments right here, one for vertical and one for horizontal. And you're gonna adjust these to get your specifications on your screen where they need to be. If you're blocking the radar, which I am right now, it's gonna go 12.8. So you kinda of gotta stay back a little bit and adjust this to get it where it needs to be. And it'll eventually, once you have it where it needs to be, you'll be allowed to press continue.
Calibration was successfully completed. We're gonna go ahead and cycle the ignition real quick, turn it off and then we'll turn it back on. I went ahead and cycled the ignition as our ADOS link asked us to do. Right now, it brought us back to our ADOS calibration main screen and it successfully saved our calibration data to the ADOS link. So I can print that off showing that the calibration was successfully completed on this. As with all ADOS calibrations, the last thing you need to do is take it for a test drive and ensure that the system is operating as, as designed before you remove it to the customer. And don't forget your post scan as well. We're gonna go ahead and take this out and make sure it's good before we turn it to the customer. Thanks for watching. Remember, anytime you want any more information on the ADOS link, the DOS 3000, and the calibrations involved in the many different vehicles, make sure you check out the Hunter YouTube page for a ton more of great information on ADOS calibrations. Thanks for watching.